Hi, I'm Shiv Kumar. You may have a big question. Why chip design? Or why should I consider VLSI for my long-term career? In order to address this question, I would like to explain how we create complex SOCs using the technology VLSI, very large scale integration. Also in this video, I'm going to show you how we create complex electronic devices like smartphones using SOCs. Now the question is, what is SOC? SOC means system on a chip. Basically, system on a chip is an integrated circuit that integrates all or most of the components of an electronic system. For example, Apple's SOC A14 incorporates everything needed for iPhone 12. So I would say A14 does everything for iPhone 12. That's why it's pretty complex and it demands more than 11 billion transistors. So in this video, I'm going to show you how we create such complex SOCs, SOCs like A14 using the technology VLSI. All right. You take any electronic system, it's composed of hardware and software. For example, iPhone 12. It has hardware made up of the SOC called A14. This SOC has almost everything needed for iPhone 12. To make a smartphone, we need different kinds of hardware components. We call these hardware components as IPs, intellectual properties. In some cases, the hardware component could be very complex. So we call them as subsystem. So you consider any SOC, any SOC like A14, basically it's composed of multiple IPs and subsystems. There could be IPs like processors, different kinds of processors, CPUs, GPUs, DSPs. CPU means central processing unit. GPU means graphics processing unit. DSP means digital signal processor. Why we use different kinds of processors, I will explain a little later. In addition to all these processors, there could be subsystems like Bluetooth component, wireless component, or that could be subsystem like system controller. System controller could be composed of various IPs like clock generators, timers, reset controllers. And there will be other IPs like memories. There could be different kinds of memories like random access memory, storage memory. And there could be different kinds of interface IPs. We may need different kinds of interfaces like USB for high-speed serial communication. In addition to USB, we may need different kinds of interfaces like SPI, UART, I2C. So the SOCs like A14 will have different kinds of IPs and subsystems. In case of smartphone, the hardware is primarily made up of SOC, SOCs like A14. In addition to the hardware, there will be so much of software. If you consider the software, there could be different things like application software and system software. Basically, application software provides the user interface. There could be different kinds of applications. In case of smartphone, there could be different kinds of mobile apps. Mobile apps like YouTube, Google Map. There could be app like Maven Silicon. You would be able to watch all our videos. In addition to the application software, there will be a system software 
What is system software? System software is the software that manages the hardware. Basically, system software provides interface between application software and the hardware. This system software is composed of various components like operating system, device drivers, and protocol stack. Operating system is the main component. So basically, operating system provides the rules, how the application software should interact with the hardware, what it should do, what it should not do. Also, the operating system provides the necessary device drivers and firmwares, including protocol stack. So the operating system takes care of certain important things. It manages the I.O. operations. It allocates the memory, including storage and RAM. It's also responsible for running multiple applications in parallel. We always want to run multiple applications in parallel. You just think of the scenario. You may want to book a cab through Uber. And then while traveling, you might want to watch the video. So, so you might be using YouTube. And then someone might be calling you and then you might want to chat with your friends on WhatsApp. So this is how you would end up running multiple applications in parallel. But if you want to run multiple applications in parallel, obviously the chip needs more processors. So we will always use multi-core processors. There will be four CPUs or six CPUs there will be multiple GPUs. That's where the operating system comes into picture. When you run multiple applications, basically the operating system runs multiple applications on multiple cores. That's how you get more speed. What is device driver? For example, if you want to connect your iPhone with an external printer, printer like HP printer, then you may want to install HP's device driver on your mobile phone. So basically the device driver is the software that provides APIs to your mobile phone. So it defines how the smartphone can communicate with the printer. If it has to send some kind of packets to the printer, I'm talking about the data, or if the phone has to receive some kind of acknowledgement from the printer. Then it has to make use of the device driver. Sometimes we call these device drivers as firmware. For example, the devices like routers or setup box, they don't really need complex software, system software like operating system. So they can be independent. They can do everything with the help of firmware. So firmware is little more complex than device driver. You think of router. You can connect any device with router. Router doesn't need any operating system. It has got firmware. You can connect PCs, you can connect laptops with router, you can connect smartphones, you can connect devices, you can disconnect the devices, you can do everything. And the router can be an independent device. Products like routers, setup boxes, they use firmware. In addition to device drivers, the product needs protocol stack. This is primarily needed to support wireless protocols, protocols like Bluetooth. These wireless protocols are very complex. There could be multiple layers. So generally, we don't implement the entire protocol as hardware. So we partition the protocol into hardware and software. And most of the layers would be implemented as software and some of the layers would be implemented at, as hardware. The partition could be like 50-50 or in most of the cases it could be like 80% software and 20% would be into hardware.
if the SOC is going to have uh, multiple processors, then the performance will be more. Then we can think of implementing most of the things as software. The processor would be capable of running any kind of complex software. In such cases, we try to implement most of the layers as part of software. At the same time, if the hardware is going to be simple, in case of Bluetooth or in case of wireless, it's going to consume very less area. So, we need protocol stacks to support the wireless components like Bluetooth and wireless 802.11. So, overall, the system software is composed of operating system, device drivers, and protocol stacks. Now let's look at how it works, how the whole thing works together. There is so much of software and the hardware has got a complex chip called SOC and how the whole thing is going to work together. For example, you look at iPhone. Let's say you click on a particular app, in this case calculator. What happens? So here the operating system loads the equivalent binary of this particular app. So in this case, this iPhone has got ARM processor. So whatever the software we run, everything will be converted into processor instruction. That's where ISA comes into picture. ISA means instruction set architecture. So the software application will be converted into processor instruction. Eventually, it will be executed in terms of machine language. So the ISA defines how the processor instructions can be converted into binary. So the processor is the one which is going to interpret the commands initiated by the application and based on the command, the processor is going to initiate different kinds of operations. That's how we would be able to do different things on smartphone. Now look at this example. When you click on any particular app, in this case calculator, basically the operating system loads the equivalent binary into RAM. RAM means random access memory. Also, the operating system loads the starting address of the binary into a special register called program counter. It's called PC. So, you consider any processor, processor like ARM or Intel's processor like x86 or the processor could be an open source ISA, a RISC-V. Every processor has a special register called program counter. So the operating system loads the starting address of the binary where the binary is loaded in, in the RAM. It loads the starting address into program counter and the program counter is going to increment sequentially. Basically the processor uses the value of program counter as address. So the processor is going to fetch the instructions from the memory based on the value of program counter and the program counter is going to increment sequentially. That's how the processor will fetch all the instructions from the memory and that's how the processor is going to execute each instruction. So what you need to understand is when you click on any particular app, the operating system loads the binary and then based on the address, the processor is going to fetch all the instructions from the RAM and then the processor is going to execute all the instructions. For example, here you can do different things on this particular app. You can add the values, you can multiply the values, you can divide the values. Every time when you do something, addition or subtraction or multiplication, it's going to initiate the processor instructions. Similarly, there will be different kinds of instructions like add, subtract, multiply. If you consider ARM processor or x86, 
And all these things will happen through arithmetic logic unit. If you go further down, deep inside the processor, you might be able to find the components like arithmetic logic unit. So whatever the operations you do on this calculator, addition, multiplication and subtraction, everything is going to happen in terms of processor instruction. And that's how the processor calculates the value. And then once it calculates the value, the results will be sent back to the application. That's how your smartphone works. So overall, you consider any electronic system, it's composed of both hardware and software. In the case of smartphone, basically the hardware is made up of SOCs like A14. This kind of SOC will have all the components needed for the smartphone. There could be different kinds of hardware components. We call them as IPs, intellectual properties. There could be different kinds of IPs like processors, different kinds of processors like CPUs, GPUs, DSPs. In addition to the processors, there will be different kinds of memories, uh, random access memory and storage memory. And there will be different kinds of hardware components like Bluetooth, wireless. And then there will be different kinds of interfaces like USB, SPI, UART, I2C. So we use different kinds of hardware components and then we integrate them together. That's how basically we build the SOC system on a chip. And this kind of system on a chip is going to be the main component of any electronic system like smartphone. On top of hardware, there will be so much software running. If you look at the software, basically it's composed of application software and system software. All right.